Hi mathematicians, this is Mr. Almeida. I hope you're doing well. In this video, we are going to learn about a specific type of division word problem uh, called partitive division word problems. Now, just a reminder, division is all about finding a number, uh, a missing factor. So finding a number that can multiply another number to give you the number that you start with. Um, so when you have 20 divided by 5, you're really asking what number times 5 will equal 20, okay? Um, so division uh, has two different types of interpretations. The f uh, one of them is called partitive, which we're going to focus on today. And this is essentially what's at play. So if you look at this picture here, you see that there is uh, some number right here. Uh, that is being split into a certain number of equal parts. So these equal size parts here is what it's being split up into. And what we want to do with partitive division is find the size of each part. In other words, find the size of one of the parts because they're all equal sized. Okay? So that is what, what we talk about when we talk about partitive division. Finding the size of one of the parts because we know that they are all equally sized. And then that'll help us figure out the answer to what the problem is, okay? All right, so let's read this word problem and let's figure out what's going on here. All right, so it says Amaya had three and one third pounds of flour in her kitchen. This was only five ninths of the amount of flour she needed for a recipe. How much flour does she need for the recipe? Okay, so when you read a word problem once, you're just getting a sense of what's really going on. We'll read it a second time to make sure that we understand what the question is, and then we'll read it a third time to find out the details, okay? So Amaya had three and one-third pounds of flour in her kitchen. This was only five-ninths of the amount of flour she needed for a recipe. How much flour does she need for the recipe? So it seems like the question is, how much flour does she need for the recipe? I'm going to underline that. And whenever we uh, come across a question, we always try to put an answer statement uh, to answer that question. That is, if I ask you, what is your name? You would reply with, my name is blank, with a blank for what the answer will be. If I ask you, when's your birthday? You would say, my birthday is blank, with a blank for what the answer will be. Okay, so when you're asked here in this question, how much flour does she need for the recipe? Well, I could say she needs blank. Now, what what unit are we given in this? We're given pounds. So she she needs blank pounds for the recipe. So I'm going to write an answer statement down here. Amaya, if you want to write she, that's fine. Needs blank pounds for the recipe okay and period always start your senses off with capital letters and end with punctuation marks all right so that's really not the mathematics part that's just the answer part of it and now we're going to read a third time to get the important information okay so amaya had three and one third pounds of flour in her kitchen stop I always say stop whenever we're coming across uh, pieces of information that are too much or we come across a punctuation mark. So what's important here? That she had three and one third pounds of flour. <clears throat> All right. Next, we have this. This is a <clears throat> pronoun that is, re that is referencing something that was just um, stated before. So what was just stated before, what is this? This is the three and one third pounds. So this is referring to the three and one third pounds. The abbreviation for pounds is LBS, okay? Interesting fact, uh, LBS is the abbreviation for pounds because the Latin word for pounds is Libras, okay? All right, so this uh, three and one third pounds was only five ninths of the amount of flour she needed. Okay, so I know that three and one third pounds is going to be five parts when the amount of flour she needed is broken into nine equal parts. All right, so I'm going to model that right now. I'm going to take this number line below here. I'm going to label it number of pounds. 
abbreviation for pounds is LBS. And I'm going to break it into, I'm going to go from zero to this tick mark here and break it into nine equal parts. So I've already done that for you already. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine equal parts. All right. So from zero to, I don't know, but that's how much, how so many pounds of flour she needed. I broke that into nine equal parts. And I'm going to take five of them. So fifth point to the right of zero, one, two, three, four, five. And right there is where I'm going to label what she had. And what did she have? It says she had three and one third pounds was five out of the nine equal parts that she needed. So that right there is three and one third. Okay, we set that, um, I can write this as a fraction. So I'll do that by multiplying the whole number by the denominator. That's nine plus the numerator, which is one. So nine plus one is 10. 10, what were we counting all along? Thirds, okay, of a pound of flour. All right, so now let's take a look at this. Um, did I make sense that Amaya had three and one third pounds of flour in a kitchen? Yes, I did. Did I say that three and one third, or show in my model, that three and one third was five ninths of the amount of flour she needed? Yes, I did. I modeled that. So I'm going to place a check mark at the end of that sentence. All right. Now I have to figure out what is this point on the number line, this question mark. All right. To do this, I'm going to focus in, in now on what she had. Okay? She had three and one third pounds or ten thirds of a pound. Um, so what does this represent? This now is going to be broken up. This unit right here, um, 10 thirds, is going to be broken up into five equal parts. So each one of these parts represents one fifth of one fifth of what number? Is it the question mark or is it 10 thirds? It's 10 thirds because that's what number is being split into equal parts. <clears throat> Okay, so this is one fifth of ten thirds. That means this point right here, this would also be one fifth of ten thirds. But the total of both of them now makes this two fifths of ten thirds. Then this would be three fifths of ten thirds, four fifths of ten thirds, five fifths of ten thirds, six fifths of ten thirds, seven fifths of ten thirds, eight fifths of ten thirds, and this point right here would be nine fifths of ten thirds. Now, interesting point th th that I want to point out now, we know that 10 thirds is 10 thirds, but how is 9 fifths related to 5 ninths, which was given to us in the problem? They are reciprocals of each other. That is the num numerator and denominator, because you've seen the number as a fraction, have been um, inverted. They've changed positions. And reciprocals are numbers that can multiply uh, each other to give you a product of one. If you multiplied five ninths by nine fifths, um, you could, you, you would get um, a whole number, the number one. Okay. So what we, why did this switch happen? Why did five ninths change to nine fifths? Well, because in the first case, you were taking the unit to be the length from zero to this question mark. And how many parts was that broken up into? That was broken up into nine equal parts, okay? So that's why the denominator was ninths there. How many of those parts were you taking? You were taking five of them, five points to the right of zero. That right there is why the numerator is five in five ninths. But now, look at what you're dealing with now. Your unit is no longer this question mark, your unit, that is the length from zero to one, what we mean by our whole, is going to be 10 thirds now. How many parts is 10 thirds being broken up into? It's so being broken up into five equal parts. So now our denominator is five. So do you see how the numerator 
and denominator have changed positions right here because I'm breaking it up into five equal parts. Now, this is fifths. How many of those fifths am I counting to get to the question mark now? Because that's going to be the answer. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine what? Fifths. And that is why the numerator and denominators change position because of this interpretation of partitive division. And it all, it all happens because you're changing what we mean by our unit. What we are breaking our, our, our unit um, into. In this case, our unit is the question mark, so we break our unit into nine equal parts. In this case, our unit is 10 thirds, or three and one third. We're breaking that into five equal parts. So one of those parts, one of those five equal parts um, of 10 thirds is called one fifth of 10 thirds. But how many of those one fifths are we gonna have to take of 10 thirds to get to the question mark? Nine of them. So the numerator um, is now nine, all right? So that's just modeling it on the number line. Now we are going to uh, see what this is as a division statement, okay? Remember, 10 thirds is really three and one third. So what we're gonna do is we're going to look here and say, um, what number is multiplying um, so this would be five ninths of some number that we don't know is equal to three and one third. So what number is multiplying the an unknown number? That's going to be our our divisor. So it's what we're going to be dividing by. The number we're multiplying by um, the unknown number is what we are going to be dividing by because that is the definition of division. So we're going to take, we're gonna be dividing by 5 ninths, and what number are we dividing by 5 ninths? We're dividing 3 and 1 third. So when you see this problem, how you, how you figure out what number is the divisor, in this case 5 ninths, is that is the number that is going to be multiplying some unknown number or some unknown factor that you're trying to find to equal three and one third. So in this case, this when you see this division expression, it's really five ninths times what number is three and one third. And that's why this is the division statement that we write, okay? Now, we know that when we're dividing by mixed numbers, we always want to rewrite them as fractions because we know we're gonna use the product formula and equivalent fractions by uh, trying to simplify. So. Remember, this is 10 thirds as a fraction divided by 5 ninths. What does it mean to divide by 5 ninths? It means to multiply by 5 ninths reciprocal, which is multiplying by 9 fifths. So this is going to be 10 thirds times 9 fifths. And then we are multiplying fractions now. So what do we use? We use the product formula. So we get 10 times 9 all over three times five. And now we're going to use equivalent fractions by dividing numerator and denominator by the same number so that we can simplify this fraction. That is the only number that can divide numerator and denominator after we've simplified is one, okay? All right, so um, 10 is in the numerator. Is there a number that can divide 10 and three except for one? No, what about 10 and five? Yes, five. So we'll divide 10 by five, which is two, and we'll divide five by five, which is one, okay? Then um, once we're at one, we know we're done, so we're gonna focus on the two and the three. Two and three differ by only one number, so their greatest common factor can be no more than one because their difference is one. So therefore, we know that the only number that can divide two and three are one. What about nine and three? Well, three can divide both, so let's do that. Nine divided by three is three, and three divided by three is one, okay? So once we're at one, we are done. So let's multiply. Two times three, two times three is six, all over one times one, which is one. And what is six wholes, or six divided by one? Six. So Amaya needs six pounds for the recipe six pounds of flour for the recipe, okay? 
Um, when you are doing this, the uh, you're going to be asked to model a word problem on a number line to show um, where the question mark will be and what the size of one of the parts will be. And once you find the size of one of those parts, you'll be able to then find um, what fraction multiplication will get you to find the answer to the, um, the question mark. And then once you've done that, all you need to do is find the size of one of the parts and what's the, what's the value at the, at the question mark. And then once you finish that, you're going to write the division expression that would come up from this situation. And then use your computational skills to get down and compute what that number is actually worth. Okay? So I hope that you uh, learned uh, that the reason why we are multiplying by the reciprocal is because of this idea of the unit being changed. Um, and when you're dealing with fr fractions, you're finding a fraction of something, and that thing is your unit. Okay? So if your unit changes, your denominators change as well. Okay? So I hope that you enjoyed this video, and I look forward to seeing you back uh, for some more Math with Mr. Almeida. Take care, mathematicians.